Okay, fair warning. I'm going to sound kind of dorky for a while because I have to get used to uh, another uh, full set of teeth. Um, so if I sound like I'm drunk, I'm not. <laughs> I'm just trying to get used to talking with um, a full set of teeth. So please bear with me. Um, okay, section two, Genesis chapter two, chapter six. Elohim revealed Jehovah Elohim. Now we move on to Genesis 2, which, become, which begins with the setting apart of the seventh day. The way this chapter presents makes some people think that there is a second creation account, Adam and Eve. But that's not really it. I believe that it's just zooming in. In chapter 1, we saw God speaking everything into existence. <laughs> defining it, declaring and separating and setting boundaries. You could think of Genesis 1 as a series of definitions, but in Genesis 2, those definitions manifest as reality for man in the garden on the seventh day. Another way to view it is to see that the view is zooming in and bringing everything described in the first six days into focus on the seventh day. Amen. There is something else introduced here. God, be God begins his interactions with man, not as God Elohim, but as Jehovah Elohim. As we saw in our messages on chapter 1, everything accomplished in chapter 1 was the work of God Elohim. But we saw that by the inclusion of of the Aleph and Tav after the name Elohim, Christ was implied. Amen. Perhaps we could say Christ was concealed in Genesis 1. Then, starting in day 7, you'll notice that it is the Lord God in the KJV. This is the English for Jehovah Elohim. This is the one who interacts with man and reveals himself to him. Genesis 2, 1 through 3, and Genesis 2, 4 through 7. Genesis 1 has Christ concealed, Elohim, and a hidden Aleph and Tav. And Genesis 2 reveals Jehovah Elohim. The second chapter begins with a sanctified seventh day. We will explore the concept of the Sabbath rest. This corresponds with God's Revelation in the holiest to a man no longer separated from God by the, by the veil. In the Old Testament, God was hidden within the veil in the tabernacle and in the temple and people could not access him. But in the New Testament, the holiest has been opened. Amen. God has been revealed in the person of Christ and is now accessible to us. Likewise, in Genesis 1, Christ is unknowable. The works of creation are coming forth from the, mystery, the, mis, the mysterious God, Elohim. But in Genesis 2, God sanctifies the seventh day and interacts directly with man as Jehovah Elohim. This is Christ revealed. The basis of the reality of the Sabbath rest is the resurrection is the revelation of Jesus Christ and faith in him. Amen. Jehovah is a transliteration of the unpronounce, unpronounceable uh, Yah. Uh, I think that's how you say it. Um, Jehovah Elohim is the pre-incarnated, pre-incarnate Jesus Christ who walked with Adam in the cool of the day and had a human form. He is known as Yah, or Yav, I, I don't know how to say that, <laughs> um, which is unpronounceable, obviously, um, because he has not fully revealed himself. Although in Hebrew, a pic pictographic alphabet each character in the alphabet has a symbolic representation of something related to Christ. If you are unfamiliar with this, you can Google Paleo-Hebrew 
and the name of Dya to <laughs> find many resources. This is the person who appeared to Moses and spoke to him as a man, even as a friend. Jehovah, the God of the Old Testament, is Jesus Christ. Amen. He said to the Pharisees, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. He saw and was glad. They then questioned, you're not even 50 years old. <laughs> How can Abraham have seen your day? He replied, before Abraham was, I am. He declared to them that he was the God of the Old Testament. He was the voice in the burning bush that proclaimed, I am, to Moses. John 8, 56 through 58 in Exodus three fourteen. Amen. Furthermore, he is the man who appeared to Abraham in Genesis 18 and shared a meal with him. This is Jehovah. This is Jesus Christ, Jehovah Elohim. He is the one who will interact with the Adam that he created in the garden on the seventh day. The Hebrew word for Eden is Aden. The word can be translated as delight or pleasure. But it is also related to the word rest or abode. So while rest may not be the most common translation, it is valid. Amen. God starts dealing with man in rest and man begins to rest. We have talked a lot about rest in our studies of Hebrews. We'll see it in Genesis as well. The blessing of rest will be a major theme as we will see in chapter or excuse me, in these first few chapters of Genesis, Genesis 1, or excuse me, Genesis 18, 1 through 8. Amen. Um, again, if you don't want to listen to me, you can just turn this off and read it yourself. <laughs> um, it's not a big deal, or just read the transcript. Hopefully they can understand me, and it comes out okay. Um, and also, I wanted to say thank you so much for all your beautiful comments, and um, uh, that... Uh, that you left me on that last post I did. Um, yeah, it's been a long, hard road. <laughs> um, it's not fully, fully over. Like, I still have to go. I'm still dealing with, like, you know, sore spots and stuff like that. Um, but the more I talk, and I'm supposed to be talking a lot, so that's why I'm doing all the tidbits today to get used to talking with them in. Uh so I'm going to go ahead and do all them for next week so they'll be ready to go. And hopefully it'll get better as I go along, Lord willing. So um, thank you again for your beautiful comments. And um, yeah, all glory to God. <laughs>